Today, I'm going to explain to you one of the most common questions that I've received so far. So the question is, when there is a compensation event which reduces the total defined cost, when will the prices be reduced and not reduced? So many of you, when you read the contract, at some moment, at some point in time, you probably will come up with a certain conclusion or impression that when there is a compensation event which, which reduces the total defined cost, the prices will not be reduced anyway. Back then when I read the contract, I got the same impression. But let me tell you, let me tell you this impression is not true. And I know where the confusion is. Back then, no one talked to me. And then when I read through the contract together with some of my job experience, I got some sort of understanding of different clauses. And I'm going to share with you in the coming few minutes these understanding, these few points of understanding in order for us to move on, in order for us to better understand the contract on this, whether prices will be reduced uh, or not reduced. And I'm going to use option C as an example. Why option C? Because if you read these clauses and if luckily or unluckily you are using option C, you will get even more confused out of these clauses. So bear with me, I'm going to show you another screen here and I'm going to put up some of the contract clauses, relevant contract clauses in order for me to break it down for you for explanation. So, so on the screen here, it shows clause 63.3, which is the starting point when we talk about whether the prices will be reduced or not reduced. And then I will show you clause 63.4 as well, which is important. And for option C, I will also talk about clause 63.13. So let me go to clause 63.3. I will read everything out and then I will explain. So clause 63.3, it says, if the effect of a compensation event is to reduce the total defined cost, the prices are not reduced unless otherwise stated in these conditions of contract. So let me break it down for you. So whenever we see the word if here, if here, it means it is, it is, it is a condition precedent. P E C E D N T. So conditions precedent, which means if the following phrases applies, then you read on. If the condition doesn't apply, then you do not read on. So if the effect of a compensation event, first of all, is it a compensation event? Yes, then you read on is to reduce the total defined cost. So does it reduce the total defined cost? If it is, if it does, then you read on. Then the effect is the prices are not reduced. So it clearly said the prices are not reduced. But hold on, if you read, read the whole phrase here, there is an exception because of the word unless. There is an exception. What is this? What, what are these exceptions? Unless otherwise stated in these conditions of contract. So there, there exist other conditions in within the conditions of contract, which tell you the prices are actually reduced. So what are these conditions? Logically, we will search through the contract and let me tell you the conditions are clause 63.4. Actually, one clause just down there. And that is a big and here. You need to read them together. Various clauses under different main options. So and main options. So let me use option C as an example. And let me tell you the clause that we need to read is clause 63.13. Reading everything together, you will understand when the prices are reduced and not reduced. So let me explain. Clause 63.3, once again, there is a condition precedent here. It is talking about a compensation event. And not all compensation events, but only those compensation events, which is to reduce, reduce the total defined costs. Then what will happen? The prices are not reduced. So that is the default. But there is an exception unless unless clause 63.4 and for other main options, for example, option C, clause 63.13. So we need to read all three clauses together in order to understand. And logically then, we will go to clause 63.4 and have a look. So it says, I will read everything and then I will explain. 
It says if the effect of a compensation event is to reduce the total defined cost and the event is a change to the scope other than a change to the scope provided by the client, which the contractor proposed and the project manager accepted or some other bullet points, the prices are reduced. So let me break it down for you. Again, condition precedent, if the effect of a compensation event is to reduce the total defined cost. So that is what we are dealing with. And the event is a change to the scope. So let's park here. If the event is a change to the scope, then the prices are reduced. If the event is not a change to the scope, then the prices are not reduced. So as simple as that. But hold on, we need to read on. We need to read on. So a change to the scope other than, so this is another exception here, exception. Other than, other than what? The rest of it here is a condition other than a certain condition. So it says, if it is a change to the scope, with an exception of a certain condition, then the prices are reduced. If this exception applies, then the prices are not reduced. So let's look at the condition here. It says, a change to the scope provided by the client, which the contractor proposed, and the project manager accepted. So what is this? For some of you, you may be familiar. This is actually contractor's proposal under clause 16. So if you read clause 16.1, you will see a very familiar, very similar phrase in there. The contractor propose, proposes a certain proposal to the project manager for acceptance. If that proposal is, uh, is for the client to pay less, for that project, for the contract. So that is a contractor's proposal. The exact wording is under clause 16.1. And therefore, if we read that everything again, but we place the condition here, that whole phrase there, by contractor's proposal, it will be very easy to understand. So it says something like this. If the effect of a compensation event is to reduce the total defined cost, and the event is a change to the scope, except a contractor's proposal, then the prices are reduced. Then logic logically, you will say, what about contractor's proposals then? Now, this one, it depends on different main options. Let's use option C as an example. So option C, it says something like this. Clause 63.13. It says, if the effect of a compensation event is to reduce the total defined cost, so actually the same. And the event is, is the whole part here. So this is the condition. And the event is a change to the scope provided by the client, which the pro contractor proposed and the project manager accepted. So let's replace this phrase by contractor's proposal. So what is this? This is actually the contractor's proposal. Contractor's proposal. So the whole phrase will read, if the effect of a compensation event is to reduce the total defined cost and the event is a contractor's proposal, prices are not reduced. So hopefully at that point, we will understand uh, the three clauses better. So to sum up, if it is a contractor's proposal, if it is under option C, you go to clause 63.13, then the prices are not reduced. If it is not a contractor's proposal, then this exception apply. If it is not a contractor's proposal, is it a change to the scope except a contractor's proposal? If that is so, then the prices are reduced. But in other cases, going back to clause 63.3, in other cases, prices are not reduced. So that is how we read the contract. You read the contract with different clauses coming together. We say read it in totality, and that is the meaning behind. Now, some of you will still not be convinced, and I sense it. I sense it. The main confusion here is some of you here may be struggling with the difference between option A and C. In option A, you have the prices. In option C, you also have the prices. But but in option A, the contractor is going to pay, it's going to be paid by the activity schedule. The prices in option A is defined as ah, you have a, an activity schedule, different activities, different prices, you add them all up. You add them all up, you got the prices. You pay the contractor by the prices accordingly. 
according to the activity schedule. So that is A. For option C, you still have the prices, and the prices is still a summation of all the prices in the activity schedule. But in option C, the prices, we call that the total of the prices because you add everything up. The total of the prices is the target for option C contract. You are not going to pay the contractor by the target. You are going to pay the contractor by the amount due, which is calculated by PWDD. You adjust it. How do we calculate PWDD in option C? You calculate this by defined cost plus fee. And therefore, since there is there may or may not be changes to the total of the prices. It is se a separate concept when we talk about defined cost plus fee as part of the PWDD. So if you can make yourself clear between the two concepts, one is the target, which is called total of the prices. And when we say whether there is a certain reduction of the prices, we are talking about under option C, this target here, whether there will be a reduction of target, and separate this from the concept of defined cost plus fee as in PWDD, you may be better off. And more so, more so, let me explain why the prices are not reduced for a contractor's proposal. So under option C, there is a target, and there is a price for work done to date. If the proposal is to reduce the amount that the client is going to be paid. And therefore, the PWDD will be reduced. If we reduce the target at the same time, which is the prices here, and there will be no use, there will be meaningless. Why? Because no contractor will, do, will, will make a proposal for you. We are artificially fixing the target in the case of a contractor proposal in order to generate a gain between the target and the price for work done to date. Why? Because when, when you have a contractor's proposal, the PWDD will be reduced and the target, which is the prices here, will not be reduced, generating a gap between the target and the PWDD. And therefore there is a gain. And the contract says, let's share the gain. And that is the reason why under clause 63.13, prices are not reduced because it is talking about contractors' proposals. For other instances, clause 63.4, prices are reduced because this is talking about any compensation event which is to reduce the total defined cost except contractors' proposal. And therefore, in, uh, in clause 63.3, it says, well, in any case, in any case, if it is not mentioned in the contract, the default position is the prices are not reduced. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean every time, every single time the prices are not reduced. In fact, there are many examples, many circumstances whereby the prices will be reduced due to a compensation event. A classic example is curtain works. For example, in water works, very common, curtain works. If a certain piece of work is curtailed from the scope, obviously the total defined cost will be reduced. Is it a compensation event? It is a compensation event. Will the prices be reduced? Well, it depends. It depends on what? It depends on whether other conditions in these conditions of contract will be fulfilled. Then you read on. Well, quick amount of work. Okay, compensation event, change in the scope. Is it a change to the scope? It is. Then the prices will be reduced. But on the other hand, if it is a contractor proposal, then the prices will not be reduced under option C. So I hope this will clear some of the confusion. If you still have some of the confusion here, uh, I do training all the time. I do training. So if you spot me in a training, I can explain to you in detail, step by step, once again, giving you all the examples. Otherwise, drop me a message. Some of, some of you might have my LinkedIn. Some of you might even have my email and WhatsApp. But by all means, please try LinkedIn first. Uh, because nowadays, there are too many messages in, in my phone. So uh, I hope that is helpful for you. I hope you will get through this as easy as possible and enjoy NEC all the way. Thank you very much.